Hello everyone, my name is Jari Tavares and I'm the head of school at Esperanza Academy and your MC for this event. It is my joy to welcome you to our virtual event. Because of our new reality, I'm speaking to you from the comforts of my home, so please don't mind if you hear the frozen soundtrack in the background. My, four, my four-year-old has far more power than anyone in this house. But seriously, these are not ideal circumstances and I'm grateful that we can all gather together to support our girls and their families during this difficult time. For those of you who, are, who know us and are part of the Esperanza family, thank you for being with us as always. We could not do any of this work without your support. And for those of you who are new to us, welcome to the Esperanza family. And let me explain a little bit of who we are. Esperanza Academy is an all girls middle school that believes in love, justice, and rigor. Our ultimate goal is not only to have our girls graduate from high school, college, and beyond, and to have them break the cycle of poverty in their families, but also to instill in them a confidence that allows them to be comfortable in their own skin. That they choose who they want to be in this world rather than let the world tell them who they should be. Our students have graduated from elite high schools and colleges throughout New England. As a school that is 14 years old, we are proud to have three classes that have graduated college and we're beginning to see Esperanza graduates become young professional women who achieve their dreams. How do we do it? We are an extended day, extended year school, meaning our students are getting a lot of academic time. We have a rich extracurricular program, including partnerships with excellent institutions such as Berkeley School of Music and others. We make a 12 year commitment to our students, which means that they are with us in middle school and our Office of Graduate Support continues to support them and their families to our high school and college, making sure that they succeed. We offer an innovative approach to trauma-informed work through our music therapist. Our music therapist offers counseling help to students so that they can heal from past traumas through songwriting, learning instruments, and singing. And we believe in the brilliance of our students, their families, and the city of Lawrence, Massachusetts. And behind all of this is an ethos of love, high expectations, and support. And while I'm just scratching the surface of who we are and what we do, I want to explain to you all what is most significant about this moment in time as we respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. There is a simple and sobering fact that we all need to consider. And that is that when crisis hits, girls and women are hit the hardest. And COVID-19 has been no exception. When we consider the fact that 78% of all healthcare and social assistance workers are women, or that 77% of all hospital employees are women, or that 88% of registered nurses are women, or that 66% of grocery store cashier salespeople are women, or that 93% of childcare workers are women. And unfortunately, we know that domestic violence and violence against women spike in any crisis. When we consider all of this, it is impossible to hide from the fact that women suffer from crisis at disproportionate rates. There are an incredible amount of essential workers throughout the globe helping us all through this crisis, and women are at the center of that. With roughly 70% of Esperanza families being single mother households, and a majority of those mothers being essential workers who are on the front line, our students, Esperanza girls, and their families are at the center of this crisis. Sheryl Sandberg, founder of LeanIn.org and COO of Facebook writes, most hardships, most crises, most wars, most famine, most economic downturns affect women and girls more than men and boys. And there's a reason for that, structural inequality. Esperanza is an academic institution that is not losing sight of our global responsibility. And while moments like this can make us all feel like we have no control, please know that your donation to the school is a form of control. We are a tuition-free school, and by supporting Esperanza, you are literally and directly improving the outcomes for girls and their families in the immediate and distant future. And you are contributing to balancing inequities in this world by investing in girls and women. You are empowering our continuous efforts to help create a successful future for each of our girls. And you are tangibly altering the realities for our students for the better. For the rest of this event, you will hear from different members of our community our teachers, our music, therapist, a board member, a graduate, and our student speaker. 
I hope you will support us as we do this necessary work for our students and their families. Your support allows us to live our mission every day as well as in moments of crisis. And more than anything, when our school gets filled again, when our students are together, through your support, we will be able to demonstrate to our girls that they are and will always be loved. Thank you for being with us today and thank you for believing in our mission. Hello, Esperanza friends. It is a great joy to be here at this Not So Fenway, Not So Breakfast gathering. My name is the Reverend Kit Lonergan and I serve as chaplain here at Esperanza Academy. And it's been my joy to offer an opening prayer at the beginning of that event for the last few years. And so I'll do so again this evening. My friends, let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day. We give you thanks for the ways in which we are brought and bound together in this moment and in this celebration, in love, in joy, in commitment, in urgency, in compassion, in unity, and most of all, in hope. We give you thanks for the whole of the Esperanza community here today, wherever we may be. Our girls who are learning in their homes, our faculty who are teaching through their computers, our administration who continues to build and grow and sustain this community, even while apart from it. And for each person here who commits themselves and joins our young women of Lawrence to build a future which embraces them, which lifts up and sustains strong young women and allows us each the freedom to use and celebrate their great gifts. Open our hearts today and our minds and open, O oh Lord, the pockets and generosity of those who are here. Wide open. Blow us open with your generosity, O oh God, so that we may be generous as well. And watch over each of us, gracious God, that each one here may be a spark of hope in this world, that each of our gifts, our wisdom, our leadership, and our service may all be poured out for a transformed and transformative world in your name for we each have a part to play in that journey. This is our prayer together. Amen. Thank you very much for all of your support, and I look forward to seeing you in person soon. Welcome back. Thank you, Reverend Kit. Uh, now you will hear from our music therapist, Cynthia Koskela, who's going to share a story with you about work that she's been doing with one of our students and her parent um, that is specific to this crisis right now that we're dealing with with covid um, so thank you and enjoy. Hello, everybody. My name is Cynthia Cosquela, and I am the music therapist at Esperanza Academy. For those that don't know or are not familiar with music therapy, our music therapy is the evidence-based use of music interventions by a board-certified music therapist um, to accomplish non-musical goals. So what does this mean? Before and during COVID, I've been supporting the social-emotional needs of our students. Um, I want to share specifically about a student that I was working with um, prior and during uh, this time where we've been isolated. Uh, this student is a sixth grader at Esperanza Academy and she currently lives with her mother in Lawrence. I was working prior to COVID-19 uh, with her to develop her coping skills um, as she experienced extensive anxiety and she really enjoyed using music, guided meditation activities to help her uh, cope with her anxiety. Uh, during COVID-19, her mother was diagnosed with this virus and it hit the family very hard because she not only was unemployed, but she only lives with her daughter alone. And so her daughter had to cook and clean for her and um, basically do everything that moms have to do for their children. Um, so during the time that mom um, was recovering, we, she reached out to me and we talked about, you know, what are some things that have been helping her emotionally through this uh, virus. And she shared with me that music and meditation actually was helping her cope with her own anxiety and depression. So what we did is I suggested, hey, why don't we have a joint music therapy session with you and your daughter, you know, once you feel a little better so that we can continue to um, provide coping skills uh, during this time. So she agreed. We had our first session and it went so great. Mom and daughter participated together um, with the use of music guided meditation activities. 
And afterwards, we were talking about how proud of her daughter we were for being able to be so strong and take care of her mother during this time. So a big focus on on her strength and resiliency. And her daughter turned over to her and looked her in the eye and said, Mom, well, I'm just glad that I was able to show you how much I love you, just like you love me. This is such a beautiful moment um, that came out of our music therapy session, and I am so incredibly grateful from the bottom of my heart to be able to provide this work um, and this service to our families. Um, again, thank you for your support, and thank you for listening to my mission moment. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, you know, the work that Cynthia has been doing at our school throughout the year, and now particularly during this crisis, has been nothing short of a miracle. Uh, she's been working with students and parents, really focusing on social emotional well-being and seeing the way that some parents and students are coming together to heal together during this um, and build even a stronger bond through her work has been fantastic and amazing. Um, I can't, we can't thank Cynthia enough for the incredible work she does on behalf of the Esperanza community. Um, it's, there's so many stories, so many stories that that should indicate the importance and the power of music therapy um, for our families and our students. Um, now you will be listening to a few of what we call Mission Minute videos, and those are different folks uh, from our community who are sharing with you highlights of their Esperanza experience. Enjoy. Hi, uh, I'm Christina Dolce. I'm the English teacher at Esperanza Academy, and my Mission Minute I wanted to share was on, so the fifth grade, we have a punk rock band. Um, we usually rehearse Friday mornings, um, but of course we couldn't bring our instruments home with us with everything that happened. We have still been rehearsing. We've been using whatever is lying around. So everyone comes in with pots, pans, someone was playing a Mr. Potato Head, um, and we're still making music and we're still having a great time. And I think that really, you know, sums up the spirit of Esperanza. Hi, friends of Esperanza. My name is Sasha Oliveira, and I'm the English Teaching Fellow. And for my Mission Minute, I just wanted to lift up the hard work that the seventh grade has been doing for English. Uh, when we had to leave really quickly and move to remote school, they were in the middle of a pretty complex text, and I was really worried that it was going to be difficult for them to engage with and to read on their own. But they've been really engaged and giving amazing in-depth responses, and their analyses have been so impressive. And I'm just super proud of them and their superstars. So thank you for listening. Hello, dear friends. Lily Leggio here, Esperanza's our teacher, hoping you are well and staying healthy. Give me a second. Oh, I'm a Yankees fan, so I must really love Esperanza Academy. Um, all joking aside, uh, I've been holding open art studios for students during uh, quarantine. And we go on Google Meet and make little art projects, chat, and stay connected. A couple of weeks ago, I was with some fifth and sixth graders. And one of them went outside uh, to proudly show us the flowers that she had planted. It was a beautiful, warm and sunny day. And knowing that not every one of our students has the luxury of being able to go outside or has a backyard, um, I said to the students, hey, you know, if you can't go outside, maybe you can open your window and feel the sunshine and the breeze on your face. Uh, this one student said, my mom won't let me open the windows because sometimes they're shooting outside. She said this very matter-of-factly, not with fear or frustration or sadness. She said she hadn't been out of her apartment since school closed. To be hearing this from a 10-year-old is heartbreaking, you know, but it's your job to give your students hope to give them ideas and options for coping and making the best out of their current situation. So I said, oh, that's okay. You know, you know what the breeze feels like on your skin. You know what the sun feels like. Close your eyes and use your imagination. When you're feeling cooped up, go to the bathroom 
or go to a quiet corner where you can be by yourself and close your eyes and take some deep breaths and feel the sunshine on your skin or walk across the common like we do sometimes for art class when it's nice out and you know walk past those enormous trees and into that area with the young trees where they have the Japanese maples and the tulip trees. Remember the tulip trees with leaves shaped like owls? Remember how we picked all those leaves and then dried them and then made art from them? Wasn't that fun? We should do this. We should do this again this fall. Don't you think? It brought a smile to her face. And these are the mission moments when I realize how vital it is, how vital our job is during quarantine, and not just for students. I am so grateful to you for your generous support of Esperanza Academy, our mighty little school of hope. Your contribution don't just make our work possible. They have a profound and positive effect on the lives of our students, their families, and the communities. Thank you, and be well. I hope you enjoy those stories. Um, there's such a range of experiences at Esperanza and the way that our folks internalize the program and the impact of the program is always, always so refreshing to hear. Um, and so I do appreciate those really beautiful stories. Um, next, you're gonna hear from our student speaker, Giselle Ramirez, who is going to the Pingree School. Um, she is, uh, she's a gem of a human being. We're really excited for Giselle and I'm really excited for you all because you get to hear um, her wisdom um, in her student speech. So enjoy. Good evening, everyone. My name is Giselle Ramirez and I'm an eighth grader at Esperanza Academy. I want to start off by saying how glad I am that this event will still be proceeding and I hope everyone's doing well and staying safe. My Esperanza story started at a very odd place. It all began because of curiosity while I was at a laundromat. My mom and I were folding our clothes right next to a lady who was folding hers. We noticed a stack of bright yellow sweaters she had been folding with an unfamiliar logo. Out of curiosity, my mother politely asked about the uniform. The lady looking at the direction where my mom had pointed rapidly answered, Oh, this right here? This is my daughter's school uniform. She goes to an all-girl private school right next to the Common Park, Esperanza Academy. My mom was so intrigued she went to see it the next day. At the time, my older sister Maritza was about to enter her fifth grade year. So my mom decided why not apply for her. With great luck, she started a few weeks later. Maritza is now a senior at Esperanza School, thanks to Esperanza. Ever since my older sister got accepted to attend Esperanza, I knew I was gonna go there too. I like to think it was meant to be. My dad always tells us we are very lucky with the many opportunities we have. The majority of these opportunities are because of Esperanza. I've gone to do things I would never thought I would do. For example, I went skiing for the first time and even camping. Not once, but twice. I also became part of a new family. Not just that I go below for my classmates, but also my teachers. Esperanza has helped me a lot. And what amazes me is the number of families Esperanza has had an impact on, including mine. I appreciate all the support that they have given to the girls in arms who lack it. I'm thankful to say I will be attending Premier School this coming fall. Out of school, I do community service. I help out some students at my old elementary school with their homework while the family members are learning English. I've met so many young kids, especially young girls, that I know would do great at Esperanza. They are always asking about my school. I tell them what Esperanza has done for me and what it could do for them. I tell them about all the great field trips and all the different opportunities, how they, how they stay connected with you and are there when you need them, and how they all and how they help and prepare you to go to a good high school. I want to end my speech by sharing with you all a vignette everyone in English class. This vignette shows how my point of view towards the world changed as I grew. Dreams. I had dreams I owned a store as big as a mall, a store slash museum where my designs and paintings would be displayed. It would have had the designs I've made for Rihanna, for Beyonce and Cardi. Who are you wearing tonight? I'm wearing Giselle Ramirez. Those dreams left. I grew up, my eyes open. I realized the world. I have different dreams now, smaller. They say anything can be possible, but it's hard. My parents work hard, so I work hard. They didn't have the best opportunities, but I do. I do it for them. Life is harder than, than it seems. Like making you better every single day when you wake up or not busting a few moves when your favorite song comes on the radio. 
I need to work hard for those dreams, to make my parents proud, to show them all their hard work paid off. And I know it may get hard, but I'll work through it. I'll find a way. I want to graduate college and hug my parents while saying, look, I made it. Wow, you have big goals. Those are some big dreams, Giselle. I know. Those dreams are big, but nothing will stop me from getting there. Yes, they're big. Yes, they're mine. Yes, I will get there. Just watch me. Thank you for listening to me. Great. So now you will hear from one of our graduates, Ivana Perez, who's a senior at Greater Lawrence Technical School. We are super proud of everything that Ivana has done, and she's going to share with you parts of her story um, and the role that Esperanza and graduate support has played in her life over the last four years um, and what her plans are moving forward. So enjoy. Hello, my name is Ivana Perez, and I graduated from Esperanza Academy in 2016. I will be graduating from Greater Lawrence Technical School this year, and I was in the plumbing program while at the school. I will be going to UMass Amherst in the Building and Construction Technology major for the fall, and will be going to college debt-free thanks to the Red Pine Scholarship. One of the people that recommended me was actually Viviana Cordero, which works with the grad support system who really helped me throughout my college experience, being able to choose what college and see the different financial packages. Bob Miller also ended up going through the packages with me to make sure that I knew and understood what my financial packages included. And one of my best experiences while at Esperanza was going to the camps like Adeline Rood and Mayor Vista. Um, it was just a different environment and being able to experience that is something that you definitely wouldn't do at middle schools other than Esperanza. I want to give a special thank you to everybody at Esperanza, all the teachers, the staff, the faculty, and especially the sponsors, which make everything possible. Um, if it weren't for you guys, then people like me wouldn't be able to get those opportunities that I have gotten from Esperanza. Thank you for your support. Wonderful. Um, now you will hear from Bob Miller. Bob Miller is a board member at Esperanza and he is somebody who we cherish at the school for his work with our graduates. He works with seniors in high school and college students and students who've graduated from college to really understand financial literacy, understand how to take out the appropriate student loans so that they don't get burdened with overwhelming amounts of loans in their lives, um, and understand how to apply for forgiveness, really understanding the implications of, um, of student loans in the lives of our kids. Uh, Bob has been exceptional in helping our students and their families through that process, which can be a very, very complicated process for just about anybody. Um, and Bob will share some of that story with you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Bob Miller, and I've been working in the Esperanza community for the past five years, the last three as a board member. One of my principal areas of interest is graduate support, and I am focusing on providing parents and students with the tools to successfully navigate the student loan labyrinth. As a recent meeting of the Esperanza Financial Committee was drawing to a close, I had this moment of clarity and, and, and perhaps an opportunity to make my colleagues smile. While I'll never show up on one of Lisa Lee's carefully crafted spreadsheets, I decided to share a quick anecdote about an often overlooked asset of the Esperanza experience, the 12 year commitment. I told my colleagues about the past few months and the privilege of working along the Director of Graduate Support, Viviana Cordero, and as we provided the class of 216, now graduating seniors, along with their parents, with critically important student loan advice and detailed explanations for their financial aid packages in both English and Spanish. And now a shout out for the students. I can't begin to lavish enough praise on this impressive group of Esperanza graduates. Their stellar records over the past four years have earned them generous and well-deserved scholarships to the likes of UMass Amherst, Wheaton, and Simmons. In one case, a full scholarship with, full, with all expenses. Their success, which we should all celebrate, is a testament to the hard work, 
resilience in the face of adversity, the tenacity to hold fast to their dreams, and of course, Esperanza's 12-year commitment to each and every Esperanza girl. And finally, I will tee it off to our Director of Development, Gia Anglin, who will talk to you all for a little bit. But I wanted to just say one more time, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining in, for being a part of this um, process with us and this event with us, for welcoming us into your homes um, as we speak to you from our homes. Thank you for everything that you do for Esperanza. Thank you for believing in us. Um, and thank you for being such generous supporters to our school. We appreciate you and we hope that you and your families are all safe and healthy. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Gia Anglin, your Director of Development. I hope you've enjoyed this evening's virtual Breakfast at Fenway event. In true Esperanza spirit, we have come together once again as a community to support our students and each other. I'd like to recognize the faculty, students, and alumni you have shared your hearts, your minds, and your homes with us over the last few weeks, helping us transition this event into the virtual space. I know it hasn't been easy. Lots of video retakes and blooper reels. Thank you. To the donor, you. None of this would be possible without your support. Thank you. To our trustees and committees, you have spent countless hours on the phone Zoom chatting, attending webinars, and finding resources to share with us during this difficult time. Thank you for your wisdom and your guidance. I'd like to recognize our corporate sponsors. Hafners, State Street Bank, Wells Fargo, Eastern Bank, Enterprise Bank, Wellington Management, Boris Lowe Insurance, and La Plume and Sons Printing. A big shout out to our two premier auction item donors, Royal Jewelers of Andover and Preza Restaurant in Boston. To our individual donors and sponsors, Sarah and Jeff Newton, Lucy and Tom Abasala, Kathy Reinhold and Bob Miller, Cheryl and Lou Maiori, Christine and Bill Dwyer, and Janet and Mike Rogers. Thank you for your enduring support. I hope you've all enjoyed this evening's event and hope to see you again soon in the future. Thank you and be well.